Hello. Since we have covered the op amp gyrator and the boost cut control, it seems appropriate to see them brought together in the form of a graphic equalizer. I thought it would be interesting to analyze a very popular guitar pedal, the Boss GE7. I believe the GE7 came out around 1981. There have been several versions since then. The GE7 is an octave equalizer having seven octave space bands from 100 hertz to 6.4 kilohertz with a boost and cut range of plus or minus 15 dB. I recommend you watch the Op Amp Gyrator's Demystified video to understand the math behind the gyrator circuit. We will be using that math to analyze the GE7. I also recommend the cut and boost level control video. It will not only be relevant to the level control in the GE7, but it's the fundamental building block for the graphic equalizer when combined with a gyrator. This is the cut boost level control op amp and associated potentiometer. It's followed by the op amp used with the gang of gyrators, a total of six gyrators and their series resonant capacitors. All their potentiometers are connected to the same bus. The 6.4 kHz control is a shelving filter. It only uses a capacitor and not a gyrator. One thing to note is that all the resistor and capacitor values are from the E12 series, which are plus or minus 10% tolerance. Let's start with the overall level control. This is the circuit we used in the cut boost level control video. Here are the components used in the GE7. Since the GE7 is a single power supply design, the resistor to ground has a DC block, in this case, C16. With the pot in the max boost position, the voltage gain is 1 plus R26 over R2. This results in a gain of 5.545, which is 14.88 dB, very close to the specified 15 dB. In fact, the resulting gain is only 1.39% less than the exact gain of 15 dB. As explained in the cut boost level control video, the bandpass band reject filter can be made by replacing RS with a series capacitor and the gyrator as the simulated inductor, which contains a series resistor RS to adjust the Q of the filter. Next, we will analyze the cut and boost level control for the various EQ bands. The voltage gain at full boost is 1 plus R25 over R17 which is 11 or 20.83 dB. This is more than the specified 15 dB. If you refer back to the 1980 National Semiconductor Audio Radio Handbook, it talks about how other filter sections interact to reduce the effect of the cut and boost by about 5 dB. Therefore, the design values will need to be about 5 dB greater than what you desire. Here is how we will proceed with the analysis. Recall the equation for the inductance of the gyrator. Since we know the component values from the schematic, we can calculate the inductance of the gyrator. We can use that inductance to calculate the resonant frequency of the gyrator-capacitor pair. Knowing RS from the schematic, we can then calculate the Q of the filter. Let's analyze the 100 Hz band, plugging in the values for R16, R17, and C13 gives us 1.842 henrys. Plugging in the value of C10 gives us a resonant frequency of 95.75 hertz. Then knowing the series resistor is R17 at 330 ohms yields a Q of 3.36. I used a spreadsheet to analyze all the bands inputting the relevant resistor and capacitor values. Notice the percent difference between the calculated center frequencies and the nominal center frequencies are within a few percent. But the most interesting thing is a significant variation in Q across the bands. You would think the Q would be the same for each band. This chart shows the variation with the Q at 800 Hz being 4.06 and the Q at 1600 is down at 3.11. 
it seems prudent to test the Q to see how it correlates with the calculations. Problem is, the bands interact with their adjacent bands, and the Q of each gyrator cannot be measured when connected to the others. The resultant Q will be lower due to the interaction. However, the measured aberration should somewhat correlate with the calculated values. Here's my test setup. I'm using an audio sweep generator app on an iPhone with a sweep time of 10 seconds. The signal is routed through the GE7 and its output is connected to an iPad with a fast Fourier transform app. The FFT app has a peak hold feature to record the spectrum across the sweep. These apps are not very precise and do not have the greatest flatness across the band, but they will suffice for making Q measurements. Here's a sweep test for the 200 Hz band. The 200 Hz slider is on max boost while the others are centered. The cursors can be used to find the frequencies at the minus 3 dB points, and then the Q can be calculated from that. I entered the rest of the upper and lower frequencies at the minus 3 dB points and let the spreadsheet calculate the measured Q. Notice there is good correlation between the analyzed versus the measured Q. The measured Q is lower than the analyzed Q, as you might expect. It also makes sense that the bands on the ends measured versus analyzed values are closer together, since they only have one adjacent band, whereas the others have two. I suspect the cues of the various bands were adjusted to make the EQ pedal have a certain color with guitars. Please leave comments if you have any ideas of why these Q values are varied. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.